Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. Brothers and sisters, on the very beginning of the ministry of Jesus Christ, this is the keynote that He gave to the people. Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. This is a very straightforward and the very beginning of the ministry of Jesus Christ, sending the very purpose of His mission in this world, telling people that they have to come back to God because the day, the coming of the kingdom of God is near. Fearless. This theme is common. For many years, this has been going all around this world. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you something today, that this event will be not any other event that you have attended. It is not just any other worship service that you have attended here in PIC, because I know today God is going to work to the hearts of the AUP students. Fearless. Fearless. I have tried to reason to myself. Lord, um, I told God, Lord, what exactly in the scriptures that you want me to speak? I mean, I don't want to speak out of myself. I said, Lord, give me something, something new, something that I don't know so that I can depend on you, a topic or a person that can best speak about conquering the fear of failure. And so this morning, I want you to know that the Bible, the Word of God, is able to tell me, and I want to share it with you. Very excited. But before going forward, I invite you to join me in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we acknowledge that in our own might, we have nothing to be proud of. The fear is so great, O oh God, against failure, and that in our own capacity, we cannot subdue it. So that today, dear God, we put our confidence in the hollow of your hands. So that by doing so, we find you as the great conqueror, able to conquer all this before him. Lord, speak to us today. Come and join us in this worship. In Jesus' name we pray. I'd like to invite you, brothers and sisters, to open your Bibles with me. Um, I was trying to reconcile what could possibly be the topic or the title of the topic. So I was impressed to choose I Conquer. Thus saith the Lord. Because I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the battle against fear is not a battle for you. It is a battle that God is going to make to it is a battle that God himself is going to... I don't know what kind of word could possibly be used so that the conquering power of God could be best explained. Name them. God will conquer. In Daniel chapter 4, Verse 20, verses 28 to 37, this particular passage speaks about a life of failure conquered by God's grace. Here, there was a story, guys. Um, King Nebuchadnezzar himself walking, you know, walking in his skin. This time, King Nebuchadnezzar was, you know, was 
having this great success. He thought that he was successful. He was thinking, okay, I have this, I have this kingdom, I have these subjects, I have this vast army, I have this great mm, land, and I have all of that person can ask. Successful. Verse 28 affirms to us that this story took place and that King Nebuchadnezzar is being portrayed here as someone thinking that he got what he wants. It says, all that this happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. Twelve months later, as the king was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon, he said, is not this the great Babylon? I have built as a royal residence by my mighty power and for the glory of my majesty. Here we have King Nebuchadnezzar thinking that he have done, he have done enough. He was able to get what he wants. What is it, brothers and sisters, that you say, I got this. I got this GPA. 3.96, sometimes flat 4.0. I got this. Well, I got this beauty for our friends. Women. For men, well, shame on you, ladies. He was so proud, thinking that he was able to be in that particular level that he said, I am a successful. But little did he, did he know that by saying so, he was approximating to the maximum limit that he can have going to fail. The words were still on his lips, verse 31, in my verse 31. When the voice came from heaven, this is what is decreed for you, King Nebuchadnezzar. Your royal authority has been taken from you. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Anything that hinders you from coming to God, He is going to take that away. I promise you. And the Bible speaks to us that anything that hinders us from God, He is going to take, whether you like it or not. Why? Oh, that's unfair. I got that one. Anything that will stand before us in God, He will take so that He Himself can, can, can conquer you. Brothers, with that wall separating Nebuchadnezzar from God, God cannot just simply sit and say and look at Nebuchadnezzar. Oh, my son. Brothers and sisters, our Father in heaven cannot, cannot take his son going somewhere else, going to the place where he wanted him to be. But Brother Nebuchadnezzar, thinking that he is successful, he, is, he, was, he was able to get anything he wants, go on by himself. You will be driven away from people and will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like cattle. Seven times will pass until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign over the kingdom of men and gives them to everyone he wishes. Immediately, what had been said about Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled and he was driven away. Brothers and sisters, to tell you, we might, have been, we might have been thinking sometimes, okay, this is what the Lord said. It's not gonna happen, you know. I saw them many times. But brothers and sisters, mind you, This guy was given enough time. This guy was given enough time 
to acknowledge God, but he didn't. Friends, how much time did God give us? My stay here in AUP for five years. Even I myself is not exempted. I have been failing to acknowledge God. Perhaps from all of the failures that you can face, you know, you may be failing uh, in your exams, midterm just passed, you don't know what the scores are, and uh, uh, you failed your relationship, you don't do well there, you failed the expectations of your parents. On top of these failures, brothers and sisters, I want you to know that the greatest fear, that the, the greatest failure that you could ever have in your life is to fail to acknowledge God in your life. This is where King Nebuchadnezzar failed. One who seemed to be successful. Don't you know that King Nebuchadnezzar have failures too? Huh, I would like to tell you some. Here it goes. There are common failures that King Nebuchadnezzar himself hates. This person hates them. First, he hates failure in governance. You know what he does? Whenever he would lead his army going to a particular place, conquering a certain kingdom, he would see to it that that kingdom cannot go up anymore to raise war against him. Example, Israel. When he conquered it, he sees to it that it is flat on the ground. Because he wants to, to get feel, he, he, because he wants to get success, even up to the point of, you know, putting down another just for him to raise up. Brothers and sisters, how many of us is just but like this? Because he wants to be, you know, to be seen greater than the other, puts down somebody else, speaks criticism against another. He speaks, he speaks, you know, against somebody else. King Nebuchadnezzar was like that. Now, what else? King Nebuchadnezzar hates failure and academic excellence. Well, do you believe so? He hates the failure on academic excellence? Yes. Why? After conquering a certain land, to see to it that he has all the best technology ever, to see to it that he has all the advanced ideas and knowledge in the, in the earth, he get all the finest scholars serve him and put them in the detention of the University of Babylon and have them teach. He wants to be the center of academic excellence, like AUP. But this time, he wants to do it because he wants to subdue another country. I don't think so. AUP has that kind of direction. Assuming excellence. So that, you know, could be identified as better than the other. What makes AUP unique is that we assume excellence because we serve God. So brothers and sisters, please, if our leaders is leading us to that direction of academic excellence, Join the boat. Lastly, King Nebuchadnezzar hates failure of career. When he was given the dream about the statue, he was bothered. He cannot sleep. Why? It has a threat in his career. He don't want to fail there. How many of us would fight so that I, being the president, should not be changed? That I am doing this, no one should go between me and my career. 
fifth year student, I, I can connect with this. But here we find the statue presented by God to King Nebuchadnezzar as one that is, you know, with different types of metal and, you know, all this description. But King Nebuchadnezzar wanting to be only himself, none others coming, back, coming after him, made a full gold statue. He hates failure of career. Yes, King Nebuchadnezzar was successful in conquering the world, but he failed to conquer himself. What else? Our friend may have been, you know, indulging all the honor, all the glory and the wealth. But tragically, Nebuchadnezzar, who once had a great palace, who once had a great peace, prosperity, and power, now lose it along with its mind. Brothers and sisters, where is your confidence? Friends, we put much confidence on our intellectuality. We put much of our confidence on our capacity. We put much of our confidence to what we can do. We eliminate God. This is exactly what happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. This great king before whom million trembled in fear has been reduced to a pathetic, repulsive, ugly beast. God knows how to get the attention of King Nebuchadnezzar. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that today, whatever is that failure that you are facing, Whatever is that struggle that you are facing, God is able to get your attention. Whatever it may be, I'm excited to know. But it is between you and God. He was very excited. I was very excited to know how will God remove me that kind of failure. I may not be able to say that to you, but I want you to know that God able to subdue me. His failure to acknowledge God was too great that all that he stored isn't good enough to pay the price. His gold, glory, and greatness combined worth nothing when he needed them most. Have you come to that particular certain when the people you trusted cannot help you? When the knowledge you have you know, you have been trusting, failed you? When everything that you thought can help you is now useless? Pause for a while. God is going to do so. A life without God is a life of failure, brother. The greatest success that you could ever have is that building of relationship with God. That kind of relationship that will make you humble still because you know that you are no match to God. Life without God is a life of failure. But I took note also that when King Nebuchadnezzar was going through to this, to this downfall, someone there was praying for him. Know who? Brother Daniel. Brother Daniel was there. He continues to ministry while he waits for the king to be restored. Brothers and sisters, especially to our friends, Adventist friends, never fail to pray for those whom you come in contact with. Those whom you know are now going through these trials, going through these failures. Do not stop the ministry that you can make in their life. There are common failures. I want you to understand this morning, and this was the understanding that was um, experienced by King Nebuchadnezzar. You know, perhaps uh, after he was thrown out of the kingdom, because this time he is now a beast, you know, going around and... Uh, Maybe eating grass and all of this. 
may be sitting one day. Sitting one day and then uh, contemplating. That time, to look up to heaven. Marvelous God. That very moment, when he acknowledged God, everything that he lost, restored to him. Brothers and sisters, there are common you know, King Nebuchadnezzar was able to notice it. There are common reality about failure. In verse six, uh, no, it in verse thirty-four it says, "At the end of that time, King Nebuchadnezzar knows that failure is sent forever. That is not forever, brothers and sisters. I want you to know that it is only for a season. At the end of that time, failure, brothers and sisters, can be ended. How? Inviting God." Yes, an experience of failure is but for a while. And mind you, brothers and sisters, that short while is very important. Why? That is the same time God is working in your heart. He conquers the heart. That is, that is the proposition that I want to say to you. God does not, you know, conquer the fear. That's always there. They never change. But God conquers the heart. You know why? Because after God conquers the heart, now this fellow before fears responsibility. He fears the failure of all of these things that is around him. But this time, because God subdued his heart, whenever he looked at them to the context of the Holy Scriptures, he looked at them in a very different perspective. So, God is conquering the heart. Fear will always be around. Especially at the end of that time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes forward to heaven. Brothers and sisters, in that very moment when you are in your failure process, when that kind of problem is still in your life, brothers and sisters, do not forget to look up to God and acknowledge Him. Lord, stop. I can't do it anymore. Preparing this sermon is quite a challenge, brothers and sisters. But not until I paused for a while. I said, Lord, take it from me. I surrender them to you. By then, information was poured in. I was very glad how God revealed me these things. Now, after he raised up to heaven, his sanity was restored. Then I praised the Most High. Brothers and sisters, whenever we have that kind of experience that God is, restore, God is restoring us in our, in our status, God is restoring us everything that we have lost, don't forget to praise God. Don't forget to praise God. So, after he was being restored, he exalted God in all of that, in all his dominion, in all of his dominion. And now, this person who was once thinking about self, now exalts God. An experience of failure then is an opportunity to extol and praise God. What is that failure experience, brothers, that you have today? Exalt God. And what else? After that kind of situation, after he was restored, now there is something unique. He spoke about the testimony of his life. He is now standing before the crowd. King Nebuchadnezzar now is standing before the crowd and speaking about the testimony of how God transformed his life. And lastly, an experience of failure is a process in which God refines the character and God restores 
that which was lost. In verse 36 of Daniel 4, it says, at the, ta- at the same time that my sanity was restored, my honor and splendor were returned to me for the glory of my kingdom. My advisors and nobles sought me out, and I was restored to my throne and became even greater. Brothers and sisters, God is refining your character today. In all of these failure experiences that you have, God is refining your character. Much more so, watch out, guys. He's going to restore to you everything that you lost and even greater. I praise my God because of this. I praise God that He is able to humble one who was thinking that he was successful. I praise God because he is able to conquer my heart. Here in the end, Nebuchadnezzar, instead of standing on his rooftop, Instead of standing in his rooftop, now he is exalting God. Not in, in, the, in the rooftop, but before the kingdom. Not anymore in that highest position. Not anymore somewhere else. But this time before his kingdom, knowing that these are the gifts of God, he is now standing, praising God. Too bad. He have to lose seven years in his mind. So today, I want you to know that in your failure experiences, brothers and sisters, find that particular spot where God worked. Where God worked. And from there, start praising God for what He has done to you. King Nebuchadnezzar could have lost seven years, but the seven years of failure was enough for him. He was able, you know, after that experience he had, no failure experience was ever recorded in the scripture concerning him. Because he walked with God. Because he walked with God. Because he walked with God. And What is that particular experience you have where that kind of failure, you can't just move on. It's hard to move on for your walk. I can't do it. There, may, there must be along the line in your life where that failure experience have been dragging you down. You don't want to move forward because you are thinking, I might fail again. Guys, I want you to know, fear not, because God can conquer your heart so that this time onward, you have a very different perspective about that particular failure to fear most. and fear are we the hearts of people these are Satan's wiles to cause my life to stumble but in Christ I put my trust there's no need to tremble I am fearless because my whole life is in Jesus I am fearless because it's Christ who lives in me as I am folded to his breast there within his arms to rest I am fearless because he lives in me I am fearless 
Because my whole life is in Jesus, I am fearless. Because it's Christ who lives in me, as I am folded to his breast. There within his arms to rest, I am fearless. Because he lives in me. I am fearless because he lives in me. Shall we all stand for the word of prayer? Father God, this morning, we are standing before your throne. Lord, we are carrying with us the experiences, some of them, O oh God, about failure. It's just so hard for us to let go of them, O oh God. They were following me. They were following us. Oh Lord, I want to get rid of them. Father God, we want to give them to you today. So that while we are standing now, I'll be giving time for the congregation to pray for them. To pray for by themselves. A time where they will talk with you. Personally, one-on-one. -on -one, in the middle of this prayer. Lord, talk with them. Father God, we want to claim the victory of the risen Savior Jesus Christ who seem failure. Many people may look him being crucified a failure. But no. Because he was crucified, he was successful to redeem me. To redeem each one of us, O oh God. Lord, we would like to claim that promise that our Father in Heaven is able to conquer our hearts. Lord, conquer our hearts now. So that this failure that we are carrying in our back will be let go. Sustain us, O oh God, with the strength that comes from above. That as we move forward, we shall continue to trust you, O oh Lord. Thank you for blessing us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> 